Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I thought we could take a look at the git stash command. Uh, the git stash command is great whenever you have uh, some changes that you're not quite ready to commit and maybe you need to uh, switch branches or uh, even uh, just you want to revert back temporarily to where it was that you started um, and you don't know what to do with your changes. Uh, well, you can do a stash on those changes and it will uh, save them in a temporary place to where you can go and do what it is that you need to do and then come back to those changes later on. Uh, so the best way is just to show you an example here. Um, so I've got a very simple .py file over here. It's just an add, subtract, multiply, and divide uh, functions. And right now uh, they don't have any return values. So let's say that we wanted to start working on this uh, Python file. So we could just do a um, git branch add because we want to work on the add function first and then we can check that out git checkout add and now let's go in here and start working on our add function so we can do return a plus b and save that now if I go over here and do a git diff you can see that we have uh, changed these lines here now let's say for whatever reason we need to uh, switch back to our master branch and check something out or we need to see uh, what our um, Py file looked like uh, before we started messing with it. Um, so what we can do here is we can just stash our changes and to go back to where we were. So to do that we can do a git stash save and now we need to type in a message for ourselves to remind us of what this um, stash was doing. So I can just say worked on add function so hit enter there and you can see that it is uh, now saved and now if I clear this out and do a git diff nothing shows up and if I do a git status you can see that there's nothing to commit and if I go back over here to my file you can see that all the changes that we made are now gone they've been wiped out but they're not gone for good if I do now we just stashed it so if I do a git stash list then you can see here it's a stash and all the stashes have these um, IDs here. This one is zero. And you can see the message that we put in uh, that we gave ourselves to remind us of what, it, what these changes were. So I said that we worked on our add function. So now you can go and do whatever it is that you needed to do. You can switch branches, uh, you know, work on other things. But whenever you're ready to come back uh, to these changes that you made, um, so we want to bring these changes back. There's two ways we can do this. We can do git stash apply and then let's copy that and just paste that in there. And if we do a git stash apply, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now you can see that it has made these changes again. If I go back to my file, you can see that our changes are now back. But now if I do a git stash list again, uh, you can see that our stash is still there. It didn't get rid of it. That's because when we do git stash apply, uh, we're uh, taking all the changes that were in that stash, but we're not getting rid of the stash, so it's still there. Um, so let me do a git checkout, and I'm just going to, that just resets us back uh, to where we were. So now if I go back to the file, this is where we started from. And so now, instead of doing, let me do a git stash list, instead of doing a git stash apply to fetch those changes, I'm going to do a git stash pop. And what pop will do is it will grab the very first stash in the list of stashes, and we only have one here, so it's going to be the top one. And then it's going to apply those changes, and then it's going to drop the stash. So now, if I do a git stash list, you can see that we don't have any stashes available. But even though it deleted that stash, uh, if I click over here on the file, it did uh, give us our changes back. So if I do a git diff, uh, you can see where we made our changes here. Now let's say that I just decided to go ahead and go and uh, fill in the uh, rest of these functions here. So I can do uh, a minus b return a times b and return a divided by b. Save that. So if I do a git diff, you can see we have all of our changes here. And now, what if somebody told us that they wanted that uh, they wanted us to add in a square function? Um, well, let's go ahead and stash the changes that we've made so far. So, git stash change, and we can just do 
um, we'll call these calc functions. And now, just to make sure that that worked, if I do a get stash list, you can see that we have our stashed value here. And if I click back over here onto the file, you can see that it set everything back uh, to what we started with. So now, if I want to add in this squared function, then I can just do a square there and save that. And now if I do a git diff, then you can see uh, that we have those changes of adding in uh, that squared function. But now let's say that, you know, maybe we need to change branches again or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and stash these changes. So let's do a git stash save and I'll say added square function. That's okay that I misspelled that. So now I do a git stash list and you can see that it pushed our calc functions down to the stash one and now our most recent change is up here at stash uh, zero. So if, I, if at this point I get, did a git stash pop then it's going to uh, pop off the uh, squared function because it was in that top position. Um, so now let me go ahead and if I did a git stash list you can see that it popped that one up pop that one off. This one's back to the zero position. Now I'm going to stash this again with the same uh, message that we had before. And if I could do a git stash list, you can see that now it put that square function right back on top to where it was. Now, what if somebody uh, came and told us that, um, you know, all of a sudden we don't need the square function anymore. Um, so all these changes, we, we can just go ahead and get rid of these. Um, so to do that, we can do a git stash drop and it's just like git stash apply we got we're going to take the name of the one that we want to drop here so i'm going to get the one that is on the add square function i'm just going to paste that in so we do our git stash drop with the stash that we want which is our top one hit enter and then if i go back over here to my file uh, you can see that it is where we started and if i go back over here to my terminal and do a git stash list then you can see that the only stash that we have is our changes to the calc functions. And so one more time just here for uh, an example, let me go ahead and make a couple more changes over here. I'm going to make one more stash. I'm just going to put the square function back in here again. And let me just go ahead and do a git stash save, add square function again, git stash list. And you can see now we have our two stashes again. And now we say that we wanted to get rid of all of our stashes and not just one stash. Um, so this is going to get rid of all the changes that we have in there. Now, be careful when you run this because um, it's going to get rid of all the stashes that you have. But say that all those changes that you made were just junk and you no longer want them anymore, you can just run git stash clear. And what that's going to do is it's going to, you can see that our file here is exactly the way it was whenever uh, we first started. And if I do a git stash list, we don't have any of those stashes with any of the changes that we made. So that is a brief overview of uh, the ways that you're most likely uh, going to use git stash most of the time. Um, one way that this really comes in handy is if I check out my master branch here, um, say that I went in and made uh, my changes to add right now. So I did um, return. A plus B and save that and then I did a git status and I saw that I modified the file and a git diff and I can see the lines that I changed here but then I realized that I'm on my master branch and whenever I try to change to my uh, add branch it's saying hey you have uncommitted files here uh, we can't do that um, and you don't want to commit those changes to your master branch and you meant to do that on your add branch well, the best way to do that is just to do a git stash because stashes carry over from branch to branch. So right here, I can do a git stash, save, and just call this add function there. And then, so now if I do git status, you can see that there's nothing to commit. And I'll do git checkout, add, and then git stash pop, which pops that top change off, and git diff, and then from there, um, those changes that you meant to commit to add, now you can do that. Just 
um, add all your changes and you know put in a commit message there. So that's a brief overview of git stash and a couple of examples of how you would use that. Um, you know, hopefully this uh, uh, quick video was useful for you guys. If you have any questions about it, you know, just ask in the comment section below. Um, be sure to subscribe for future tips and tutorials, and thank you guys for watching.